It's Derek Christensen. It's Felix Stubbs. It's Albert Gray. Distinguished representatives of the Port Authority and uh, Ross University. There are so many people to recognize but the, in the local government of Freeport nowadays, they have to write their names down. <clears throat> it used to be easy to say Sir Jack and Edward St. George and Albert Miller. <laughs> but I, I want to say I'm, I'm pleased to be, and, and my colleagues and distinguished residents of Grand Bahama, I'm pleased to welcome you to Grand Bahama, Dr. Shepherd and to welcome Ross University to Freeport. I look forward to a long and mutually beneficial relationship between yourselves, Grand Bahama, and the Bahamas. For many years, we in the Bahamas have resisted the temptation to become involved in the growing American offshore medical education business and, and also to become involved in the question of offshore universities. Forty years ago, attempts were made to create a university here in Freeport, Grand Bahama. And uh, for more than 20 years, offshore medical schools have been seeking to enter the Bahamas. We have been reluctant to do so because we were interested to ensure that any who might be permitted to come would meet international standards and be a credit and not a discredit to the Bahamas. So we are coming to the party of offshore universities, offshore medical schools quite late. But we've done so after appropriate due diligence being conducted with respect to the Ross University and after satisfying ourselves that they are fit and appropriate persons to establish a university here in Freeport, Grand Bahama. <clears throat> I regret that the Minister of Education and the Minister of Health could not come because we are in Parliament today and since all of Grand Bahama MPs wanted to come and my plane only got seven seats, <laughs> we had to leave them behind. <clears throat> We've now agreed terms with the university, as I said, we are satisfied they are the right institution and that its operation here will bring credit and not discredit to the Bahamas. The university, I'm told, will be located here on this site, acquired from the Port Authority or one of its associated companies, near the heart of uh, the city of Freeport. And its initial operations will be, or interim operations, will, will, will take place at the campus at Seahorse Shopping Plaza in Freeport. Between Hans Babick and Frankie Butler, they must be very pleased to have that space rented to you. <laughs> the, the university's program in Grand Bahama begins as a branch of the, of the institution medical program in Dominica. It will accommodate, I'm told, increased enrollment at, at its school, and uh, those who cannot be accommodated in Dominica will come here. And so enrollment is expected to be 250 or thereabouts um, initially, and to grow to as many as 1,000 within the first three years of operation. And the longer time, it's our hope and expectation that they will have as many as 3,000 students here in Grand Bahama. I need not tell you the impact which universities have upon communities and our cities and our towns situated near them. But I want to take the opportunity this afternoon to thank the Port Authority for their tenacity in bringing this venture to fruition um, and to also say to the university that it was not easy to get the government to change its mindset. By the government, I mean the government bureaucracy to change its mindset about not having offshore medical centers in the Bahamas. It was a transformation that had to take place with some brute force from time to time, I might say, <laughs> um, because they, we had convinced ourselves in the Bahamas that such a thing is not to be. And when you seek to turn around a bureaucracy, it is a very hard thing to do. <clears throat> so I want to recognize and thank all of those who were involved in the process. You, Mr. Hans Babick, 
and the St. George's, not the St. George's, the Haywards, and also to recognize the part you played, uh, Christensen and others, in making today possible. Um, Dr. Shepard has told you about the university. I need not repeat it except to say this. I expect that they are going to provide five medical scholarships annually for Bahamians. Bahamians, by which. <laughs> by Bahamians, I mean Bahamians from any place in the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> the decision of the university to locate here, a branch here, is going to bode well for you in this island. It is particularly good news for you, representing a first important beginning of a turn in the road to economic recovery and vitality, missing from this island since the terrible hurricane season of 2004 and 2005 and the closure of the Royal Oasis, uh, Royal Oasis facility. Um, I'm told that the university is in the process of preparing a formal economic impact assessment as to what is likely to happen. But based on what they have done in Dominica, I think it is fair to say that their benefits to this community will include the direct inflow of income to the local economy from the international students who will come to live and study here. Additional benefit will flow from the employment of Bahamians in many capacities. Um, they also expect that a significant percentage of their employees will be Bahamians. And if they use the Dominica formula, uh, once enrollment reaches, say, 1,400, um, approximately 250 residents can be expected to be engaged um, who would be Bahamians out of a total staff of, 100, of 400, including many technical and professional persons. Um, staff members and their immediate families, including spouses and dependents, um, are entitled to very generous tuition discounts and scholarships and training programs throughout the United States of America, online and internationally. Another source of financial inflows to the community will result from the provision of trans transitional housing for a portion of the faculty and students. Um, they expect to construct, I'm told, on campus um, student housing to accommodate approximately one-third of their students and faculty. This housing may be built in partnership with experienced local developers and entrepreneurs so Bahamians can begin to step forward and not wait and say Hans Babick and Edward St. George's family and Sir Albert Miller's family and the Haywards etc. hogged up everything. You can supply it yourself. <laughs> The housing of the remaining 70% of staff and students on, on off campus will provide excellent opportunities for Bahamians to engage in the housing rental business. Indeed, students and staff spending on housing, on food, on transportation, and other direct living expenses can be expected to account for additional tens of millions of dollars flowing directly into your local economy annually. Additionally, they say they're going to spend uh, um, some 35 to 60 million dollars in construction during their initial three to five years, providing significant impact upon the construction sector of the economy and employment in that sector. And finally, the Grand Bahama tourism sector can expect to benefit from the travel to and from Freeport campus by staff, students, and their families. This is an exciting new venture for Grand Bahama. And so, on behalf of the government of the Bahamas, I extend very best wishes to the principals of Ross University and their parent corporation. I congratulate those of the Port Authority, its chairman, its president, and you, Sir Jack, for your continued commitment to develop and expand economic opportunities for Freeport. And I say that notwithstanding the continuing and hopelessly lengthy wrangling and squabbling which continues between the owners of the Port Authority. I note finally that Eric Christensen, the chairman of one of the port groups, is someone with whom I and my government are happy to do and to continue to do business with if he is allowed to do business with us. Thank you, good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you.